here come the Dallas Mavericks again. Now, it's been a very interesting up and down period. I remember making a video, I think it was right before, right after the All-Star break, after a hot run and saying Kyrie and Luka are going to be hard to stop. And then the dip happened, right? A lot of bad games, a little bit of a bad stretch. But then, bam, magically again, the run started again. And the Dallas Mavericks started to look like that team that a lot of people in the NBA should, like truly should, have some fear playing against and especially seeing them at that six seed you don't want to be the minnesota timberwolves at the three seed facing them in the first round of the playoffs trust me and i think at the end of the day this kyrie irving game winning shot against out of all teams who i think the best team in the nba is the denver nuggets is going to be a huge turning point in the entire season and kind of that next step of the next step of being great. They, like, you know, you look at this. They had, they lost, what was that? They lost five out of six games, right, after the break. Then they went on four-game winning streak. Miami, Detroit, Chicago, Golden State. Lost to OKC in a tight one. And then that game winner against the Nuggets. Obviously, the game winner was big. Also, Luka had 37 points in that game. So it was just, you know, a Kyrie Irving game winner, a Luka Doncic 37-pointer. Everything was pointing to the right things. On top of that, you go then beat San Antonio, then you go beat Utah, and I think the run is starting. Now, the road trip happens, right? At Utah on Monday, at Sacramento, back-to-back -back Tuesday and Friday, at Rockets and at Golden State, and the Rockets are hot too. But if you can win four out of five of those, all of a sudden, you're going to be looking at a Dallas Mavericks team that has already moved back into out of the playoff game, into that sixth seed. But they're only three games behind the four seed in the Clippers. Win four out of five, and I bet you, because the Clippers are starting to play a little worse. The Pelicans right above them at the five seed. Brandon Ingram just got hurt. Now, it's nothing that's going to keep him out, but you know he got a little banged up. The Mavericks are going to start making their way towards potentially getting closer and closer to around that four seed. And that's when things start to get exciting. I think with Kyrie and Luka, it's going to be a hard team to stop. Like I said, you look at that game against the Denver Nuggets. Not only did Jokic, he always has a good game, right? But 16, 11, and 7. They held Jokic to 16 points. That is a good sign for your basketball team. And, you know, the, the Derek Lively and the ability to have him and somebody like Gafford and a lot of good big play recently, young good big play, has been a big deal for the team. And you look at a game like that against the Nuggets. 24 points, 7 rebounds, and 9 assists for Kyrie Irving with the game winner. And 37 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 assists for Luka Doncic. That's going to be a hard team to stop. A real hard team to stop if those things are clicking, especially with the role players. Like Lively, 14 points, 8 rebounds. And you look at, you know, we'll get to what Gafford did against the Jazz. These things are very important. And then you go to the Jazz, the last game the Mavs played. P.J. Washington, a normal game of six points and, you know, five uh, rebounds. Uh, Derek Jones Jr., 12 points, four rebounds. Cool. And then you get to this. Like I said, some, young, some good big man play. Gafford was 10 for 11 with 24 points and seven rebounds. Kyrie, 16 points, seven assists, five rebounds. And Luka Doncic, 34 points. Nine rebounds and eight assists. And then one of the biggest things I've noticed here, the biggest thing I've noticed with this team in general is the way Kyrie's been playing so unselfishly. Now, I'm a big Luka Doncic fan. I'm not calling him selfish. I think he plays basketball the best way that fits for his style. But there's, there's a reason it's working with Kyrie. You don't want another, you know, People consider Kyrie to be ball dominant, but I don't think unless you watch him carefully, which I, if you're watching this and you're not a Mavs fan, you got to watch the games maybe a little bit closer. I'm not, you know, specifically a Mavs fan, but this team really intrigues me. And so if you watch in details, go even watch reruns, some of those longer version of highlights, like those 10 minute version of highlights. If you don't want to watch a full game, Kyrie's unselfishness causes a lot of the good production for this team. And for a guy like Luca. You need a second star that has that unselfishness aspect. 
let's look back. I'm not comparing these two teams. I'm just saying let's look back to the Miami Heat when they were uh, they lost the first finals to the Mavericks. The next year, you know what made them good enough to make a run and go win the next two championships? When Dwayne Wade told LeBron James, "These are your keys. I'm gonna be the I'm be your your Robin to the Batman." I think Kyrie, without even having to say it, is just good at that. He's played with LeBron James in the past. He gets it. He knows Luka Doncic is the Mavericks' golden child. You know, he's the best player on this team. Might be one of the best player, one of the top two or three in the world. So Kyrie rolls in, doesn't try to be the number one, doesn't try to take away the shine. He just let it flow into being, I'm going to be the most unselfish number two and only be selfish when I need to and do whatever's best for this team and for Luka Doncic, and it works perfect. And that's why you, when you see these numbers sometimes, look at the plus minus. The Mavs are actually minus three with Luka on the court against the Jazz. Look at that plus minus for Kyrie. Plus 37. 37 point swing having him on the court. That tells you a little something. His unselfishness, his ability to score when he needs to, pass when he needs to, make the right plays when he needs to, throw up a nice lob, get the offense moving in a different way, whatever it is he needs to do, that's what Kyrie does. So don't sleep on this Mavericks team. And don't sleep on Kyrie and Luka. I mean, 25 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds, 50% shooting pretty much, 49 to be exact. For Kyrie with Luka, 34.1, 9 rebounds, 9.8 assists. When your number one guys, first in the NBA in scoring, 17th in rebounding, and we're talking about like a, a three here, right? Luca's like a three. Maybe he's pretty, yeah, like a small four. And top three in assists at 9.8. And then you have your number two guy being 25, five and five. It makes it hard to stop him. And I think another big piece I mentioned already was Daniel Gafford. I mean, 25 years old. He's young, important big dab on a team. Averaging 11 points, 8 rebounds. And, you know, you look at a game like against the uh, Nuggets. when Him and Lively, right? The 24 minutes and 23 minutes. Pretty much split down the middle. You see a guy like Jokic, 6 for 16 of 16 points. You'll live with that. And if that happens in the playoffs or sometime, you'll be fine with it too. I think the Mavs are going to move up to the 4 seed sooner than later and i can't wait to see what else comes out of this team knock on wood let's hope Kyrie can stay healthy that's going to be the biggest key here and if he does i don't know who's going to beat this team i think it's going to be a very high chance that this team goes really deep in the playoffs i'm excited and i can't wait to watch